Hi, in this video we're looking at Lewis dot diagrams, which are uh, really just kind of fun. Um, Lewis dot diagrams help us visualize the valence electrons around an atom. And so they show valence electrons as dots around the element symbol. Um, and so let's just kind of go through a, a good example of one. If we start with neon, um, how many valence electrons does neon have? Uh, well, it's in group 18, and so it's not helium, which would only have two valence electrons. It must have eight valence electrons, and it does. And so it's helpful to think of this structure of two boxes on the top, two boxes on the bottom, two on the left, and two on the right. And this is where we're going to put in dots, and these dots represent only valence electrons. Now, I learned always to start in this box here, uh, but you could really start anywhere for these. When you start placing dots, and we want to just put the number of valence electrons as dots around the symbol, uh, you have to kind of skip from one side to the next. So if I start placing the first dot here, I'd maybe put the second dot there, the third dot here, and the fourth dot there. Now that, um, I still have four more to place. I just want to pause for a second. This matches what's going on in subshells and orbitals. Electrons really want to spread out before they're forced to buddy up. So now I have four. I have to place four more, and now I'm forced to kind of pair up electrons. So my fifth electron dot's going to go here, my sixth, my seventh, and my eighth. And then in your mind, you can picture these boxes as structures, but really we wouldn't draw in these boxes. So I'm just going to kind of explode those away, and this would be what Neon's Lewis electron dot diagram would look like. It's completely filled up with electrons around it, and so neon is not really going to want to bond with anybody else. There's no openings for any electrons to come in here. So that's how I know neon would be a noble gas. Let's look at another example, phosphorus. Phosphorus is in group 15, so that means it has five valence electrons. So again, I start here, one, two, three, four, and then for that fifth one, I'm going to have to buddy that up. Now, as you look at this, it may be tempting to want to center these dots on the top, bottom, and left. Don't do it. Um, there's a reason for that, and I'll show you right at the very end of this video. But this would be what I'm sorry, phosphorus's uh, Lewis dot diagram would look like. Here's another example. Sodium. Sodium is in group one. It only has one valence electron, so boom, there's sodium's uh, Lewis dot diagram. Here's another one. Bromine is in group 17, so it has seven valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's bromine's. Uh, Lewis dot diagram. Okay, let's move on to our last example, oxygen. Oxygen is in group 16. That means it has six valence electrons, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and so there's oxygen's Lewis dot diagram. Now, I mentioned just a, a few seconds ago not to center these dots on the top and on the left or any side where there's just one dot, and the reason for that is because we've essentially made a puzzle piece for oxygen. Oxygen really wants two more valence electrons to have a total of eight. And so these kind of openings here are beautiful for us to fit in some other elements that would want to do, uh, make a bond with oxygen. And so now look, we've just made water, H2O. Oxygen has a, a full valence shell with eight valence electrons in it. Remember, hydrogen only wants to be like helium with this, just two valence electrons. And so everybody's happy in this scenario, and this is how we make water. This is how water is actually laid out. So Lewis dot diagrams. We're essentially making little visual puzzle pieces for all the atoms. It helps us think about how atoms bond with other atoms, and that's the direction we're headed in in the course. Thank you.